In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to use one of the specialist layout tools for rotary applications. We're going to show you how to use the fluting layout gadget tool to automatically create the vectors that will then be machined to produce the fluted column that you can see on the screen. So this represents where we're actually going, but let's have a look at creating our own version of it. So let's go up to file and close. Okay, so let's create that new file now. So let's click on create new file. And we want to make sure our job setup sheet is correct. So first things first, we want to make sure our job type is set to rotary, that our job size is set to a length of 12 inches and a diameter of three inches. Of course, making sure our units are actually set to inches as well, very important. Making sure our Z0 position is set to the cylinder axis. Now, this is because we don't know the exact circumference of the cylinder in this scenario. Obviously, this may change depending on your machine and your setup, but for this scenario, I'm going to use the cylinder axis. My XY datum position is going to be in the bottom left hand corner. I'm going to use the orientation of uh, along the X axis, which means I'm wrapping in Y. You may want to do the, the opposite and wrap around the X axis and along Y. But for this scenario, I'm going to go with the X axis. And I want to ensure that my resolution is set to the highest possible uh, in this job sheet. So let's click OK with our settings all confirmed. Okay, so now we need some vectors to actually work with so we can start creating our fluted column. Uh, but as you can see, we don't have any in the moment, but that's because we're going to use the gadget, which is a very powerful tool that in fact allows us to create our vectors in a much easier way. Uh, so those of you who have VCarve Pro and Aspire will have access to this gadget. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. If we come up to our gadgets menu at the top, come down to wrapping and choose the fluting layout gadget. Okay, so with our form open, you can now see there's a very brief explanation of the uh, fluting gadget. Uh, you can see that we can set the number of flutes that we have, the uh, distance from the start of the worksheet to uh, the start of our flute. So for example, uh, if you wanted to have a flute that started one inch from the edge of the worksheet here, you would just set one here as we've got here and same with the end over here. You can also have the options to add in some coves uh, into your flutes and these would intersect and wrap around the worksheet where the ends would meet to create that cove. So I'll just go ahead and turn those on and I'm going to set my number of flutes to six. So with that all set, you can see our cylinder dimensions that we set up in our job sheet earlier are also represented down here as well. We've got our length 12 inches, our diameter three inches. So with that all set, ready to go, let's hit OK. Okay, so as you can see, we've now got our uh, vectors on the screen. So it's important to note that you could have done this manually, but there are some intricacies that the gadget has taken into account and done for you. For example, if you click on these vectors, you'll notice that we've got these flutes in the middle here, but we've got half a flute at the bottom half flew at the top. And that's because the software has taken into account that this is going to be wrapped and it's actually made sure that when these intersections at the top and the bottom here meet when this is all wrapped, because if you imagine this is actually a uh, unwrapped uh, rotary job at the moment, so this will eventually become a cylinder. So when these two uh, edges meet, they will meet up smoothly and it will create a single flute. So that the gadget is taking that into account for you, uh, which may be more difficult to do when you're doing it manually. Also, you'll notice that at the end, we've got these two vectors here, which are actually our codes. If you remember, we set those up in the gadget earlier, and those have been represented here, one inch from the edge of the worksheet. And again, these ends will meet up when this wraps up to become a cylinder. So let's now have a look at some of the layer information before we go ahead and look at some of the machining tools. So if we come up to our layers tab now and click on it, you'll see that we've got a number of layers that are here with some extra layers that have been created, including the zero plane and the bounding box, which is actually uh, a perimeter around the outside, which you don't actually need in this particular case. But we also have these two key uh, layers, which are the fluting vectors and the co-vectors. So you'll see if I turn the fluting vectors off, you'll see they've now disappeared from the middle. Turn them back on, there we are, there's our fluting vectors. And again, in the end, we've got our co-vectors, which are represented at the edge of our fluting vectors as well. Okay, so with that covered, let's go ahead and look at machining some of these vectors. So if we come up to the top here and click on this button to switch to the tool, uh, toolpath commands, and we can have a look at our material setup. So you'll notice that a lot of these settings are actually from our job sheet earlier. So you'll notice that our diameter is at three inches as we did earlier. Our XY datum is the bottom left hand corner. Our Z0 is set to the center of the cylinder. Now, in regards to the model position in material, we won't be using this in this scenario, but 
This is obviously important for when you're unwrapping a 3D model or using a flat 3D model. But in this case, we're not doing that, so we don't need to deal with this uh, part of the form. And we do need to take into account our rapid Z gaps above the material. This will obviously depend on the stock you're using and the material you're using. But with that all set and everything looking okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and click okay. So now that we've addressed our job setup sheet, let's have a look at running some toolpaths. So if we come over to select our vector, so I can just left click on my flutes and then hold shift, left click on my codes. Now you can also use a different methodology to do this. You can actually click anywhere on the sheet and just press control on the keyboard. And while you're holding control, click A and that will highlight everything on your worksheet. So you can use either of those in this scenario. So let's come up to our profile toolpath. So we want to keep our start depth at zero, but we do want to change our cut depth. We only want to go down to 0.2 inches here, and we do want to change our tool. So we actually want to use a different tool here. So we want to click on select, come over to our ball nose, and these settings all look correct to me. And this is the a half inch ball nose I want to use, so I'm just going to click select. In this case, we want to machine on the lines. We don't want to go around them by going inside or left or outside and right. We want to go on the lines themselves. Okay, so don't need to worry about doing a separate last pass here or adding a tab to it because it's a rotary job. And don't need to worry about any ramps or anything like that at the moment. But I do want to change the name here. So I'm just going to call this Profile Flutes. I'm just going to hit Calculate. Okay, so right away you can see our toolpaths are represented now on our 3D view. So you've got your blue lines which represent where our tool is going to go. I'm just going to go ahead and tile our views for the moment. So you can see there's our 2D representation and here's our 3D representation. Uh, but it's important to note, if I run this preview toolpath now, you may have briefly seen there, if you looked on our 3D view, that the job had unwrapped itself. And that's because it's actually running a standard 3-axis uh, toolpath on this project. So what's happening is that currently a three axis toolpath is being run on this, but when it comes to post out to your machine, when you select your post processor for a rotary job, that is when it will wrap it around the axis. If you remember that we set in our job setup sheet to help you visualize this, I'm just going to go up to the top here and you'll notice there's an option here that says toggle automatic wrapping in 3d view on or off. I'm going to turn that off and you'll notice that this is just a standard three axis toolpath. You'll notice that this is just a flat toolpath that is actually being wrapped around and it actually gets wrapped around when you go to uh, machine it uh, using your specific post processor that's um, compatible with your machine. So this is just a visual representation of what is going to happen when you go to actually uh, machine your project file. So this is just a purely visual representation until you actually post this out to your machine with the correct uh, rotary uh, post processor. So at this stage, you'll be ready to now select your post processor and save out your file ready to machine. And to do this, you can refer to our great guide on toolpath saving, which is our toolpath saving guide tutorial, as well as a specific guide on how to save a rotary uh, toolpath in our introduction to wrapped uh, rotary text, uh, which is also linked in the description below for you. Okay, so with that covered, I'm now going to close out this form and look to save this file off. So let's just go up to File, Save As, and we want to make sure that it's saved as a CRV file. I'm going to call this one the Creative Fluid Column. I'm just going to overwrite my existing file. There we go. Now I've got my project file saved for use for later. Okay, so that concludes our tutorial on creating a fluted column, as you can see on the screen at the moment. And we made use of a very powerful gadget in the fluting gadget, which enabled us to automatically create the vectors that are suitable for creating this type of column that you see on the screen. And it also took care of a lot of the spacing and made sure that all the vectors are placed on the correct levels. But this can be done manually, albeit that the gadget just makes this a lot easier for you. I hope you found this helpful and we very much look forward to seeing you in the next video.